Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn is the latest film in the DC Extended Universe and acts as a follow-up to Suicide Squad, which featured Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, who was really the best part of that movie. This is also the first R-rated DCEU film, or MA15+, plus if you live here in Australia, so there's a fair bit more blood and swearing than your typical comic book film. Of course, last year's Joker was R-rated, but that movie exists outside the main DC film's continuity. Kathy Yan directs Birds of Prey from a script by Christina Hodgson, making this one of the few comic book films this year to not only star female comic book characters, but also having women be the creative voice behind the scenes, which definitely helps provide a much needed fresh perspective to these comic book films. Birds of Prey sees Harley Quinn having been dumped by the Joker, and quickly realising that she doesn't quite have the same level of protection in Gotham that she used to. So in the midst of trying to get over a breakup, Harley also has to avoid being murdered by the numerous criminals in Gotham's underworld, including the unhinged, narcissistic crime lord Roman Sionis, aka Black Mask, played by Ewan McGregor, and serial killer Victor Saz, played by Chris Messina. It also just so happens that a number of other women are being hunted down by Black Mask, namely Cassandra Kane, Huntress, Black Canary, and Detective Renee Montoya, played by Ella J. Basco, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Janice Molay Bell, and Rosie Perez, respectively. And so these women all have to come together to defeat Black Mask and his reign of terror on Gotham. Birds of Prey is a film that I wasn't 100% sold on. Based on the trailers and marketing, I was a little worried that it might fall into the same trappings that crippled Suicide Squad, and that we'd be getting another movie cut together like one big music video. While I'm glad to say that Birds of Prey is a far cry better than Suicide Squad, although it isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, the entire film is told primarily from Harley Quinn's perspective, which allows for the story to take shape based on her personality, and for the plot to unfold the way that Harley sees fit, which really makes Birds of Prey more of a Harley Quinn film, rather than a traditional adaptation of the Birds of Prey comics. The plot structure of Birds of Prey is akin to a Guy Ritchie movie, or the first Deadpool film, where the story switches between different points in time and characters, before eventually bringing all the pieces together and moving things forward. If you saw the recent Guy Ritchie movie The Gentleman, Birds of Prey will feel somewhat similar in that regard. This can leave the first act feeling a little confusing, for what is essentially a pretty straightforward story, but once all the plot elements come together, the film becomes pretty simple to follow. And while I'm sure that some will make out that this film is trying too hard to be Deadpool, this really feels more like the X-Force movie that Ryan Reynolds never got to make. There's plenty of humour in the film that at times breaks the fourth wall, but most of the best laughs in the film actually comes from Ewan McGregor and Chris Messina. The dynamic between Black Mask and Victor Saz is packed full of energy, and the two of them are so entertaining to watch as these unhinged psychopaths, especially with Ewan McGregor going purposely over the top as a bubbly nightclub owner, then suddenly switching over to this terrifying villain. None of it should work, but because the movie is being told from Harley Quinn's perspective, it all fits and makes sense. This movie isn't designed to be the gritty Gotham of Batman's world, instead it's meant to reflect Harley's heightened perspective on life. However, the humour in the movie doesn't always land, with some lines from even Margot Robbie herself not quite hitting as well as they could have. These moments can briefly leave the film feeling a little bit awkward, and dare I say it, bordering on cringeworthy, but the movie usually bounces back with the great chemistry between all the birds of prey, especially Ella J. Basco as Cassandra Kane and Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Huntress, who almost steal the show with each of their recurring gags. Additionally, Harley's hyena Bruce is used wonderfully. Birds of Prey is packed with plenty of welcome visual gags and an abundance of colour, at times utilising the title card introductions of Suicide Squad, albeit far more effectively. What surprised me the most is how solid all of the action in the film is. John Wick director Chad Stahelski came on board as second unit director for Birds of Prey's reshoots to help punch up the action scenes and boy does it make a world of difference. The fight scenes are fast, well paced and staged, with a great welcome focus on stunts and choreography instead of CGI, much like you'd see from the John Wick films. And with Birds of Prey having a more mature rating, that means there's more room for some bloody fun. Birds of Prey is never too brutal or gory, like the recent Hellboy film was, but it is fast and bloody. If you've seen either of the Deadpool films, you'll have an idea of what to expect. Despite all of this, the movie is a little thin, with its messages being kept a little subtle and light. The movie is focused on being more of an introduction to the Birds of Prey, rather than being a traditional superhero team-up film, leaving plenty of room for more adventures in the future. So I do hope that some of the members of the Birds of Prey get explored in more detail later down the line. It's also just fantastic to see Harley Quinn come into her own as a character, separated from her toxic relationship with the Joker and managing to find her purpose through a whole new family. Birds of Prey is a film that won't work for everyone, and I feel that it's a film that'll speak to some viewers more than others, totally depending on the demographic. When Birds of Prey works through its action and cast, it's a great time and can be a lot of fun, but it also has some elements like the comedy that doesn't always work, where perhaps some more improv or ad-libbing could have punched up the scenes a little bit. Birds of Prey is a fun time, and is worth a go if you want a fairly solid girl gang 
film that is set in the mold of a Guy Ritchie film. There's also a little something at the end of the credits, so be sure to stick around. Birds of Prey gets a 7.5 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your Mono Fix. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.